So here's a final thought I want to leave you with. Because this will, this will set us up for next week's lesson. It's, well, it, this is the drawing that shows you why I was not the illustrator for Yoga Anatomy. <laughs> this, is, this, is the, this is pretty much the extent of my artistic skill. I get a little better when I'm drawing stick figures. But that's about it. I'm going to call the diaphragm the engine of three-dimensional shape change, meaning the engine of breath. The diaphragm is the engine of three-dimensional shape change in the body. So when I say engine, I'm going, to, I'm going to make it quite literally mean the same relationship that the engine of a car has to what a car can do. So the engine is the source of all of the power that a car uh, generates in terms of its movement. Its electrical system runs off the engine. Everything that a car can do, it can do because it's got an engine. Okay. Now, when you're driving, what is it exactly that you're controlling with your right foot? The gas. The gas. Right. Well, the right foot still does the gas in the stick shift. <laughs> Even if you're in Australia. That was what was weird. I, I rented a, a, a car in Australia, and it was a clutch. And the, the foot pedals were the same as on the other side. But of course, my hand was doing, and the gears were reversed. It was just, for a dyslexic person, this was very dangerous. <laughs> yeah, very confusing. It's like that old joke about the Siamese twins, you know, um, why they went to London. No? The other one wanted to drive. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> oh, you just got that. You got the visual, yeah, okay. So <laughs> what is it th about the engine you're controlling with your right foot? The gas, yes, but when you feed more gas to the engine, what happens? It spins faster, that's it. You're controlling the speed of the engine spinning with your right foot. Now, when you want the engine to spin faster, you push down. When you want it to spin slower, what do you do? You... Release the pressure. It's not like you have your foot in a stirrup where you have to push down and pull up, right? Because slowing it down is, is a passive thing. It's when you release the pressure that it slows down because there's a spring. You ever had your throttle give out? I have. I've had my clutch give out. I've had my throttle give out. I've had to drive home on the Taconic with a, a tie rod off. You know what the tie rod is? No. So it connects the steering wheel to your wheel. What? Yeah. You can steer with one wheel. The other one's going to kind of go around like a shopping cart wheel and follow the one you're actually steering with. You can't drive with two tie rods gone, but with one, it's possible. But the Taconic, that's bad. It's a very windy road for those of you that aren't familiar. Anyway, that's a long story. Yeah, the Taconic's a death trap even when you have two tie rods. Anyhow, so speeds up, slows down. Now, so when I want the car to go that way, what do I do? Do I push down on the right side of the gas pedal? No. If I want the car to go backwards, do I pull up on the gas pedal? No. We know this. Even people who don't drive know this. You don't steer your car with your engine. What do you steer it with? You steer it with the steering wheel. How do you make it go backwards? You change the transmission. Okay? You know, if you're going too fast and you need to slow down, faster than just decelerating, what do you do? You hit the brakes, right? In other words, you don't steer the car with the engine. The power that the engine generates is being directed and steered and channeled with all of the other structures of the car that take that power and put it in a particular direction. So in exactly the same way, the diaphragm is the engine of all of this shape change. Okay? Place one hand here and one hand here. So just like the gas of the car, we can control the timing of the diaphragm, right? Everyone, take a deep breath now. 
and exhale. See, you're able to do it on cue, weren't you? And wait for a minute, wait it, wait, wait for it, wait for it, and take a deep belly breath now. Felt the belly move a little bit more? Okay, pause, wait. Next one's gonna be a chest breath and we're gonna do it right now. You did it. Now, here's my question. Did you send different messages to your diaphragm to do the belly breath or the chest breath? If you're paying attention, you'll say no right away. Because you said no right away when I said, when you steer the car to the right, does it mean you push down on the right side of the gas pedal? You don't steer your breath with your diaphragm any more than you steer your car with your engine. It's all the other musculature in the body that can participate in shape change that steers and shapes the breath as we just did. Not the diaphragm. You're not changing the signals you send to the diaphragm when you take this breath or that breath. You're changing what we call the accessory, the action of the accessory muscles. So that's going to be the theme of next week's class when we cover the accessory muscles.